Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Valsa Williams and with me is Renuka RS with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reviews COVID-19 situation in the country. Indian Army establishes COVID management cell to coordinate assistance to civil authority. Civil Aviation Ministry issues guidelines for timely vaccination of aviation community. Madhya Pradesh government extends Janta curfew till 15th May to check rising cases of COVID-19. More than 16 crore 25 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses administered in the country so far. Central government delivers 730 tons of oxygen to Delhi government. Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal expresses gratitude. Delhi government caps maximum prices for private ambulance services. Ambulance can charge 1500 rupees for the first 10 kilometers and after that 100 rupees per kilometer. Agriculture Ministry formulates special Kharif strategy for ensuing Kharif season to attain self-sufficiency in production of pulses. And Centre makes it mandatory to issue online certificate of disability from next month. As the number of COVID cases is on the rise, we appeal to our listeners to take all precautions and all those above 18 years of age to get vaccinated without any hesitation. The vaccination for persons aged between 18 and 44 has begun at designated facilities. Stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain Doga's key duty for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. Another news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today undertook a comprehensive review of the COVID-19 related situation in the country. He was given a detailed picture on the COVID outbreak in various states and districts. He was informed about the 12 states which have more than 1 lakh active cases. The Prime Minister was also apprised about the districts with high disease burden. Details in this report. Prime Minister was briefed about the ramping up of healthcare infrastructure by the state. He directed that states should be given help and guidance about the leading indicators to ramp up healthcare infrastructure. The need to ensure quick and holistic containment measures were also discussed. The Prime Minister noted that an advisory was sent to the states to identify districts of concern where case positivity rate is 10% or more and bed occupancy is more than 60% on either oxygen supported or ICU beds. Prime Minister Modi also reviewed the availability of medicines. He was briefed about the rapid augmenting of production of medicines including Remdesivir. Prime Minister also reviewed the progress on vaccination and the roadmap for scaling up production on vaccines in the next few months. He was informed that around 17.7 crore vaccines have been supplied to the states. The Prime Minister reviewed the statewide trends on vaccine wastage. He was briefed that around 31% of eligible population of over the age of 45 has been given at least one dose. Prime Minister spoke about the need to sensitize states that the speed of vaccination does not come down. With Suparna Saikya's road, this is Diksha Saxena for AIR News. The Indian Army has established a COVID management cell to coordinate assistance to civil authority. The cell is under a Director General Rank Officer, which reports directly to the Vice Chief of Army Staff. This will bring in greater efficiency in coordinating real-time responses to address exponential rise in COVID cases across the country, including Delhi. Assistance to civil administration in Delhi is already being provided in the form of testing, admissions in military hospitals and transportation of critical medical equipment. The Indian Army has been at the forefront of the COVID response at the national level. It has deployed considerable medical resources to assist civil authorities, especially at the five COVID hospitals already functional or in the process of being established at Delhi, Ahmedabad, Lucknow, Varanasi and Patna. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has lauded the armed forces for their services being rendered during this pandemic. Responding to Defence Minister Rajnath Singh's tweet, the Prime Minister said, Jal, Thal and Nub, Indian armed forces have left no stone unturned in strengthening their fight against COVID-19. The Defence Minister has said that along with the efforts put together by the scientific community, health professionals and civil administration, the armed forces too have pitched in the battle against an invisible yet deadly enemy and they are engaged to help mitigate the sufferings of the people. 
The Civil Aviation Ministry has issued guidelines to ensure timely vaccination of the aviation community. All players in the civil aviation sector have been advised to cover their personnel under the ongoing vaccination program. Guidelines state that the organizations which have already made arrangements with the government or private service providers for the vaccination of their employees may continue to do so. Further, a dedicated vaccination facility should be established by the airport operators and their respective airports to facilitate expeditious vaccination for the personnel involved in aviation or related services. The guidelines state that required facilities like setting up of vaccination counters, segregated waiting area are to be established by the airport operators. The cost per vaccination dose can be decided by the airport operator with the service provider. These facilities are to be available for all the aviation sector stakeholders at the same cost. For smaller airports, the airport operators can approach the local administration for extending the vaccination program. The facilities created by airport operator would be available for all the civil aviation personnel in its first phase and can be extended to the family members subsequently. All airport operators have been advised to designate a nodal officer for coordinating the efforts. The Indian Railways has delivered 2,511 metric tons of liquid medical oxygen, LMO, in 161 tankers to various states across the country so far. 40 Oxygen Express have already completed their journey. It is the Indian Railways' endeavor to deliver as much liquid medical oxygen as possible in the shortest time to the states who have requested. Till date, 174 metric tons has been offloaded in Maharashtra. Presently, 22 tankers are on the run with more than 400 tons of LMO, which are expected to arrive in MP, Haryana, Rajasthan and Delhi. Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh today said that the Department of Space has gone beyond its call to provide COVID-related support, mainly liquid oxygen, to Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Andhra Pradesh and Chandigarh. In an online review meeting, Chairman Isro Dr. K. Sivan said 9.5 tons of oxygen is being given to Tamil Nadu and Kerala per day. 87 tons of liquid oxygen manufactured and supplied by Isro Propulsion Complex has already been given to Tamil Nadu and Kerala by ensuring 24-7 work schedule. The department is also ensuring supply of oxygen cylinders for the local public in Andhra Pradesh and Kerala. The minister asked the department to explore the possibility of creating more COVID care centers apart from the ones established in Bengaluru, Shillong and Sriharikota. Secretary, Department of Administrative Reforms and Public Grievances in the Varpande today reviewed the COVID-19 public grievances with grievance officers of central ministries and departments as well as with the state governments. During the meeting, he highlighted the policies adopted by the government to ensure time-bound grievance redressal at the time of the pandemic. These include operationalization of a dedicated COVID-19 portal for monitoring citizen grievances related to the pandemic. India has administered over 16 crore 25 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses in the country so far. The Union Health Ministry has said that more than 19,55,000 beneficiaries have been inoculated with COVID-19 vaccine doses in the past 24 hours. The Delhi government today capped the maximum prices that private ambulance services can charge in the national capital. Now patient transport ambulance can charge 1,500 rupees for the first 10 kilometers and after that 100 rupees per kilometer. For basic life support ambulance, 2,000 rupees can be charged for the first 10 kilometers and 100 rupees per beyond kilometer. Advanced life support ambulance can charge 4,000 rupees for the first 10 kilometers and 100 rupees per kilometer beyond the first 10 kilometers. The decision has been taken amidst reports that private ambulance services are charging illegitimately in the city. In a tweet, Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal said strict actions will be taken against those who violate this order. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has expressed his gratitude towards the central government for delivering 730 tons of oxygen to the city government. Addressing the media, the Chief Minister said Delhi needs 700 tons of oxygen daily and if the quantity is ensured per day, then more oxygen beds will be created than the existing capacity. He said due to the shortage of oxygen, several hospitals, including the government's hospitals, had to reduce the beds. He appealed to the hospitals to now restore the number of beds as per the earlier capacity as the government is expecting to get the required quantity of oxygen per day. He said if the city government gets an adequate supply of oxygen, then it will be able to set up 9,000 to 9,500 oxygen beds. 
on vaccination. The chief minister also urged the people to get vaccinated at vaccination centres. He said so far 35,74,000 vaccine doses have been given to eligible people. As the second wave of COVID-19 intensifies, Maharashtra is facing the problem of shortage of medical oxygen in order to address this issue. Mahabha Atomic Energy Research Center, BARC, has set up a special oxygen plant to supply medical oxygen to Mumbai. The BARC today said that in the first phase, about 10 cylinders of 50 litres each will be available from the plant. The cylinders will be supplied to government hospitals and COVID centres in south-central Mumbai, BARC has indicated its readiness to increase supply as per demand. Besides, National Chemicals Fertilizers has also set up an oxygen plant at Shatabdi Hospital in Govandi in Mumbai. Maharashtra has emerged as the leader in the COVID-19 vaccination drive as it crossed the 1.67 crore inoculation mark today in comparison to other states. It also became the first amongst the states to give both doses to the highest number of citizens. So far, the state has administered 1 crore 67 lakh 81,719 doses. A total of 2 lakh 59,685 citizens were vaccinated yesterday through 1,586 vaccination centers across the state. This includes 1,53,967 citizens in the age group of 18 to 44 years. More from our Mumbai correspondent. So far, 1 crore 39 lakh 15,088 citizens have been given the first dose of vaccine in the state, while 28 lakh 66,631 citizens have been given both doses. Dr. Pradeep Vyas, Principal Secretary of Public Health Department, said Maharashtra has taken the lead in vaccination drive from the very beginning. At the same time, he noted that the rate of vaccine wastage in the state is only 1%. Meanwhile, as the second wave of coronavirus has put a strain on the state's health system, Health Minister Rajesh Tope today informed that 16 thousand posts will be filled in the health department on an immediate basis so that there is no shortage of manpower during the third wave. Sweetie Jane, AR News, Mumbai. You are listening to the evening news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reviews COVID-19 situation in the country. Indian Army establishes COVID management cell to coordinate assistance to civil authority. Civil Aviation Ministry issues guidelines for timely vaccination of aviation community. Madhya Pradesh government extends Janta curfew till 15th of May to check rising cases of COVID-19. More than 16 crore 25 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses administered in the country so far. Central government delivers 730 tons of oxygen to Delhi government. Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal expresses gratitude. Delhi government caps maximum prices for private ambulance services. Ambulance can charge 1,500 rupees for the first 10 kilometers and after that 100 rupees per kilometer. Agriculture Ministry formulates special kharif strategy for ensuring kharif season to attain self-sufficiency in production of pulses. Center makes it mandatory to issue online certificate of disability from next month. For quick news updates from the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. Welcome back to the evening news. In Madhya Pradesh, Janta curfew has been extended till May the 15th. Addressing people of the state virtually, Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan today said the state will follow strict Janta curfew till May the 15th to break the chain of transmission of corona. More from our Bhopal correspondent. During a virtual address, Chief Minister directed officials to ensure that the corona curfew is enforced without any laxity. He said that the state was seventh in terms of transmission till April 21st and we have brought it down to the 14th place with public support. Chief Minister also expressed gratitude to the people, elected representatives, volunteers and civil society organizations who are extending support to the government for Janta curfew. Chief Minister requested to halt all activities, defer weddings till May 15th. He stressed upon the need for strict adherence to Janta curfew. Pooja P. Vardhan, AIR News, Bhopal. Kerala will be under complete lockdown from the 8th 
to the 16th of May on account of rising cases of COVID-19. The state reported the highest single-day spike in COVID cases so far as it confirmed 42,464 new cases today. More from our Thiruvananthapuram correspondent. Complete lockdown will come into effect in Kerala from day after tomorrow and will continue for 9 days. Only essential service will be permitted. Public transport will not be there. Timings of shops selling essential commodities regulated from 6 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Inter district travel will not be permitted mostly. Only parcel service will be permitted in restaurants. Detailed instructions will be released tomorrow. Meanwhile, the test positivity rate continued to be high at 27.28%. The active COVID cases in Kerala rose to over 3,90,000. Mayusha for a news from Tiruvannadapuram. Tamil Nadu has reported a surge of more than 24,000 fresh COVID cases today. Over 1,28,000 people are being treated in the state. The state health department said that the death toll due to COVID has increased to 195. The state's capital Chennai has registered more than 6,000 cases with Chengalpatt and Coimbatore districts. Union Minister Dharmendra Pradhan has asked the public sector undertakings in Odisha to contribute to the ongoing vaccination drive against COVID-19. In a virtual meeting held with the senior management of all the PSUs across sectoral ministries in Odisha today, the Union Minister said the PSUs should take the lead in procuring vaccines from the open market to inoculate their own employees and also the people over 18 years of the age in the civil society. This, he said, will further speed up the vaccination drive in the state. Captains of healthcare and financial institutions and senior officers of the state government also participated in the meeting. More from our Bhubaneshwar correspondent. The meeting focused on synergizing efforts to work with the whole of government approach to ramp up the healthcare infrastructure in Odisha, including oxygen support system across the state. In yet another development, Chief Minister David Patnaik today has requested the center to exempt COVID vaccines from GST. In a letter to the Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman today, Mr. Patnaik said that the GST exemption will reduce the cost of the vaccines for the state, thereby facilitating the drive towards universal vaccination against COVID-19. Meanwhile, the Cumulative COVID-19 positive tally of the state has crossed the 5 lakh mark today with 10,000 plus people reported positive during the last 24 hours. Girish Chandra Das, AIR News, Bobadishwar. Assam Chief Minister Sarbanand Sonowal has instructed all deputy commissioners to regularly visit hospitals for better COVID management. The Chief Minister held a video conference with all the deputy commissioners and senior officers of COVID management. The Chief Minister also told them to ensure that the prices of essential medicines should not rise. He also emphasized on COVID awareness, including in tea garden areas. The Chief Minister instructed the power department to ensure supply of electricity during the pandemic. Sikkim reported 264 new cases of COVID-19 today. This is the highest number of cases of COVID-19 reported in the state in a single day. More from our Gangtok correspondent. Of the new 264 COVID-19 infections, East Sikkim district reported 148, taking total cases in the district to 6,881. South Sikkim reported 90 new cases with a total of 1,406 cases, while West Sikkim reported 19 new cases with a total of 555 cases. North Sikkim recorded 7 new cases, taking the district tally to 137 cases. A total of 50 new recoveries were also recorded in the state in the last 24 hours. Hours. Beginning from Thursday, Sikkim has introduced new restrictions which will be applicable till 16th May. These include restrictions in interstate and interdistrict movement, daily curfew from 5 p.m. to 9 a.m. and closure of all state government offices. With Sai Katsarkar and Pankaj Dhungal, Pajit Sharma from Gangtok for AIR. Himachal Pradesh Chief Minister Jairam Thakur launched a dedicated COVID-19 helpline in Shimla today. Mukhya Mantri Seva Sankalp Helpline 1100 will facilitate people with issues related to COVID-19. While appreciating the efforts of the Information Technology Department, the Chief Minister said this helpline is unique in itself by ensuring effective use of technology in facilitating the people. The Haryana government has launched Ayurvedic telemedicine facility for corona patients. Health Minister Anil Vidh said that any patient can consult the Ayurvedic doctors on phone by dialing 1075. The Health Minister said the facility has been launched after verifying the response of Ayurvedic medicines used on corona patients. 
Even as the number of COVID positive cases is showing an upward trend in Jammu and Kashmir Union territory, at the same time due to the timely medical assistance provided by doctors and paramedics and following all the advice and guidelines, many COVID-19 infected patients are recovering. Three people who were infected with coronavirus were treated by doctors in COVID care center Khatua and after turning out negative were discharged today. Talking to AIR News, they thank doctors and paramedics. Sharing their experience, they said, I am going to go to the hospital. 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 I am going to go to the government has termed a message being circulated on social media claiming that hospital beds are now available in Ames, Delhi, as they have converted all wards into COVID wards as fake. Press Information Bureau in a tweet said the message is fake and all wards have not been converted into COVID wards at Ames, Delhi. India has welcomed U.S. support for relaxation in the norms of the agreement on TRIPS to ensure quick and affordable access to COVID vaccines and medicines for developing countries. In a statement, External Affairs Ministry said India is hopeful that with a consensus-based approach, the waiver can be approved quickly at the WTO. It added that the waiver is an important step for enabling rapid scaling up of manufacture and timely availability of affordable COVID-19 vaccines and essential medical products. India has expressed gratefulness to Germany for providing a massive oxygen-generating plant. The plant is being shifted in two parts, and the first part arrives today. External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bhakti said this will further boost India's oxygen capacities. A consignment of essential medicines from Bangladesh reached West Bengal via land border at Petropol today. India has thanked Bangladesh for this gesture and support. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jayashankar held bilateral foreign ministers meeting with British counterpart Dominic Raab today. Both leaders focused on responsibility for implementing the 2030 roadmap. In a tweet, Dr. Jayashankar exuded confidence that early progress will be seen on many fronts. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will participate in the meeting of the European Council on Saturday as a special invitee. The India-EU leaders meeting is hosted by Prime Minister of Portugal, Antonio Costa. Portugal currently holds the presidency of the Council of the European Union. Prime Minister Modi will participate in the meeting along with the heads of the state or government of all the 27 EU member states. In Tamil Nadu, the Chief Minister-designate M.K. Stalin of the DMK has released the list of his cabinet colleagues. It includes 34 members led by him. A release from the Raj Bhavan says Governor Banwari Lal Purohit has given his approval to the list and the cabinet will be sworn in at a simple function to be held in the Raj Bhavan premises in Chennai at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Here is a report from our Chennai correspondent. The 34-member cabinet led by DMK President and Chief Minister-designate M.K. Stalin is almost an equal blend of the old and the new. Fifteen of the 34 ministers designate are freshers to the cabinet, though many of them have been MLAs in the outgoing assembly. For a bit of number crunching, 46% are experienced ministers and 44% new. Political commentators say the composition of the cabinet has wider representation to all the regions in the state besides giving birth to the minorities and women. Jay Singh, AAR News, Chennai. A four-member fact-finding team of the Union Home Ministry tasked with looking into reasons for the post-poll violence in West Bengal arrived in the state today. Led by an additional secretary of the ministry, the team visited the state secretariat and held a meeting with the West Bengal Home Secretary and DGP in Kolkata this afternoon. The team, which will also assess the ground situation in the state, is likely to visit several areas in the city, as well as South 24 Parganas, Kodkali, Sundarbans and Jogadol. The Ministry of Agriculture has formulated a special Kharif strategy for implementation in the ensuing Kharif 2021 season with an aim to attain self-sufficiency in the production of pulses. Under the strategy utilizing all the high-yielding varieties of seeds that are available either with the central seed agencies or in the states will be distributed free of cost to increase area through inter-cropping and sole crop. For the coming Kharif 2021 season, it is proposed to distribute more than 20 lakh mini kits of seeds amounting to nearly 82 crore rupees. It is 10 times more than last year. 
The Finance Ministry today released the second monthly installment of post-devolution revenue deficit grant of 9,871 crore rupees for 2021-22 to 17 states. With this, a total amount of 19,702 crore rupees has been released in the first two months of the current financial year as post-devolution revenue deficit grant to the states. The Centre has made it mandatory for all states and union territories to issue the Certificate of Disability through online mode from next month. The certificate will be issued only using Unique Disability ID Portal. The Department of Empowerment of Persons with Disabilities has issued a Gazette notification in this regard. Department of Health and Department dealing with disability matters in states and UTs have been advised to take immediate steps to ensure compliance of this notification. The move will ensure complete digitization of certification of disability besides providing a viable mechanism for cross-checking genuineness of the certificate to achieve pan-India validity and simplifying the process for the benefit of Divyangjan. The Supreme Court has termed the Madras High Court's observations against the Election Commission as harsh and inappropriate. The court said there is need for judges of superior courts to exercise restraint and not make off-the-cuff remarks in court proceedings. However, the Apex Court said the High Court did not attribute culpability to the Commission for the spread of COVID-19. A bench headed by Justice D. V. Chandrachur said they find that the High Court was faced with a situation of rising cases of COVID and was duty-bound to protect its citizens. However, it said the method of the court was harsh and inappropriate. The Supreme Court said a degree of caution and restraint on the part of the High Court would have allayed these proceedings. Yeah, it added that the oral remarks are not part of the order and hence there is no question of expungement. The Apex Court declined a plea made by the Election Commission to restrain the media from reporting oral remarks made by the division bench of the Madras High Court. The court was delivering the judgment on the petition filed by the Election Commission against the oral remarks of the Madras High Court that the Election Commission was singularly responsible for the second wave of COVID in the country and it should probably be booked for murder charges. It said the media coverage of court hearings is part of freedom of press and it has a bearing on citizens' right to information and also on the accountability of the judiciary. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. National capital Delhi is expected to have partly cloudy sky. Minimum temperature will be around 25 degrees Celsius. Maximum will be 38 degrees. Mumbai will also have partly cloudy sky. Minimum temperature will be around 27 degrees Celsius and maximum around 35 degrees. Chennai will have partly cloudy sky with minimum temperature touching 28 degrees Celsius and maximum expected at 35 degrees. Kolkata will have partly cloudy sky with possibility of moderate rain or thunderstorm. Minimum temperature in the metropolis will be 24 degrees Celsius, while maximum is expected at 35 degrees. Jammu is likely to have partly cloudy sky becoming generally cloudy towards afternoon or evening or night. Minimum temperature will be around 21 degrees Celsius, while maximum will be around 34 degrees. Srinagar may experience thunderstorm with rain. Minimum temperature will be around 11 degrees Celsius and maximum of 23 degrees Celsius. Leh will have generally cloudy sky with temperature hovering between 3 degrees to 16 degrees Celsius. In Gilgit, minimum temperature will be around 11 degrees Celsius and maximum is expected at around 30 degrees. The region will have generally cloudy sky. In Muzaffarabad, temperature shifting from minimum of 11 degrees to maximum 28 degrees Celsius. There may be thunderstorm accompanied by rain. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reviews COVID-19 situation in the country. Indian Army establishes COVID management cell to coordinate assistance to civil authority. Civil Aviation Ministry issues guidelines for timely vaccination of aviation community. Madhya Pradesh government extends Janta curfew till 15th May to check rising cases of COVID-19. More than 16 crore 25 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses administered in the country so far. Central Government delivers 730 tons of oxygen to Delhi Government. Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal expresses gratitude. Delhi Government caps maximum prices for private ambulance services. Ambulance can charge 1500 rupees for the first 10 kilometers and after that 100 rupees per kilometer. Agriculture Ministry formulates special Kharif strategy for ensuing Kharif season to attain self-sufficiency in production of pulses. And Centre makes it mandatory to issue 
online certificate of disability from next month. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.